<laughs> really excited to have Tyler Jones with us this morning, and he will be uh, filling in for the next four weeks. Tyler is just finishing up study, his studies at Moody Bible School, Bible College, excuse me, and he is, has enrolled and will be starting at seminary at Moody in Chicago this fall. And we've, the, the deacons have gotten to know him through the phone and through uh, in, uh, correspondence with him for the past, oh my goodness, since like January or February, it's been a long time. And so to have him here now is a treat. So I want to invite Tyler to share with us his uh, testimony uh, of his faith. So Tyler, come on up. to be here. I'm going to start with prayer. Amen. Thank you, Father, Lord, for the opportunity to share the work that you've done in my life, God. All the honor, all the glory is to your name, Father. You set us free from the prisons of the world. You break the bondages that are over our life, God. You take what the world sees as nothing, and you turn it into something that you use for your glory. And Father God, I ask that you would clearly articulate through me right now, Father God, what you've done in my life, God. I said it would provoke faithful worship and praise within your people, God. We honor you as the head of the church now, God. We ask for your spirit to be among us. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. amen. Yeah, so, um, yeah, coming out from Chicago, and I'm, I'm honored to be amongst every single one of you guys, truly. I believe that we're all beloved saints in the kingdom if we profess Jesus as Lord, and I believe that I'm simply a brother, and God's called me. And so what can I do but answer that call when the living God puts something on your life? What can you do but respond? I mean, he's God. Who are we? Um, I was born again three years, about three years and three months ago. Uh, I lived a very disobedient lifestyle to God. I was following my own path, doing what I thought was right. I actually thought I knew God better than anyone else around me. I thought I had the answer to life. So evangelism for me it was something I was doing before I was a Christian it was not a very good thing I would proselytize people my own gospel kind of like this spirituality new ageism a little bit of Buddhism a little bit of Taoism a little bit of you can do whatever you want drug use promiscuity I didn't grow up in a church background but God found me still though I didn't grow up with uh, the the mentoring and the discipleship that so many of my brothers and sisters within the faith around me today have, God met me where I was at through a, a couple of different circumstances that softened my heart to the gospel. I mean, one of them was when I was 19, moving back in with my mom and um, deciding that I need to stop using drugs, deciding that I need to take a break from the lifestyle that I'm living to really make sure that in this universe, that, that my role in this universe is the, the best I can, I can live, is the best life that I can live. And while I thought I had it, while I thought I really knew God, I thought I was really doing it the best way that I could do it, I did question it in that moment. I questioned it as I was looking at myself in the mirror one day and I said, you know what, I need to take a break from using drugs. So I took a three month break. And in that time, I got plugged in with the Christian fellowship. Uh, it's kind of interesting how it happened. I was just looking for people that weren't using drugs. I was looking for people that were pursuing a sober lifestyle and I couldn't find anybody. It's like the enemy didn't want me to, to get out of there. I would, I had a job at a gym at LA fitness and, um, I, uh, there was a good, a good friend that I started to get to know there. And then he, um, busted out some drugs, and I was like, man. Uh, I met some people at college. I was going to school for business at the time, and once to go hang out with them, and they were such honors like, right away. And, um, you know, I, I couldn't find people that were serious about living life in a sober manner. And so I decided to go hang out with Christians, all the while thinking, you know what? Yeah, they might, they might know God in their way. But I need to open up their mind while I'm here because these Christians are closed-minded. They're judgmental, you know. They don't, they don't see God. They don't see the freedom that comes from living in the world, right? So I thought I was going to open up the minds of those around me. And I went in. I walked through the front door. And, you know, Christians always open. They're always being so invitational. And uh, I've always been pretty 
um, what I would consider a very open type of person. And so I walked through their front door. I didn't knock. Uh, I, the door was open and I walked inside of a house of people that I've never met before because uh, I thought that's how Christian fellowship worked. I walk into their living room and everyone's sitting around and I have a Bible that someone had given me a long time ago, but I wasn't a Christian. I just sat down and listened at the end. I let them know, hey, I'm not a Christian, but um, I'd love to just hang out here. And so at first it was a social thing. I met another guy at the gym who happened to be a part of the same congregation. And I thought that he was into Buddhism, Taoism, so I talked to him and then he told me that he was a Christian. And then he invited me to come to his hand. And so now I'm in two different fellowship groups. And for about eight months, I'm hanging out with Christians. Um, and over the course of that time, I ended up going back. You know, I started, went back, straight back into uh, using drugs. I wasn't born again. I didn't have the spirit of God living inside of me to show me how to live life. And so I was living life still how I thought we need to live. You know, the scriptures tell us there's a, a way that seems right to a man that leads to death. And it seemed right to me. I really thought I had it. And I'm still, I'm still talking to these Christians. And there were some really gracious brothers and sisters in Christ that would have long conversations with me. Um, and really put up with my, uh, with my um, new age worldview. And would listen to what I was coming from. And then would apologetically break it down. You know, how the gospel is sound. How it's reasonable. How it's logical. How science does not contradict the gospel. It, instead, actually, science is a glorious tool that brings glory to our Father in heaven. And so, um, yeah, fast forward eight months down the road from when I walked into that first Christian fellowship. And they invited me to an apologetic conference. So I decided, hey, I'll go. I, you know, I'd like to take a trip to Alabama. And I'm getting high that week. You know, I'm hanging out with my girlfriend at the time that week. And I sober up on the way down there on a, on a van ride down to Alabama. And I hear some, uh, some really beautifully spoken words about how logic points to God. About how logic does not contradict the living God, but actually how he transcends it. But we can use logic to glorify his name and to, to seek him with a renewed mind. And I'm really interested in science. And so I'm hearing these scientific breakdowns, you know, just... The, the weight of a, a proton, a neutron, electron, the distance from uh, the earth to the sun, the moon, you know, the galaxy around us, how we're placed in this place in time and space. The Milky Way galaxy, you know, couldn't even exist unless it was in this perfect place within time, in this perfect, in this perfect space. And all this started opening in my mind. And, you know, all the while, I remember, I think I know God. I'm like, of course, he's an intelligent designer. You know, I get that. Um, but I walk into another room. And there's a Christian rapper in there, and his name is Odd Thomas, uh, and he, he's, he does some beautiful Christian rap. And I got to talk to him for a couple of minutes before he gave his talk on making God glorified through art and using our heart to express worship to him. And before that time, I had thought that worship was a, was a bondage thing, that Christians were enslaved to a God who, who forces them to, to worship him. And that it's not glorious or joyful in any single way. Um, but he actually broke it down for me during that time where he, where he was able to speak to me and, and get me to realize that the reason that humans are created is to express ourselves unto God wholeheartedly. We don't need to uh, hide anything from him, but instead he will redeem all things. And everything that he was saying, I would talk about God in the rap lyrics that I was making. But I would obviously talk about my own imaginative God that I had crafted in my own image. And then he, he broke it down for me how God is, um, how he, he is who he is. And he doesn't need us to, to, make, to make him in our own image. But that actually we were created to worship him with our whole heart exactly how we are. And after I left that room, I went back into the other room and there was another speaker, uh, J.R. Wallace. And... He was an atheist, cold case, murder detective who had converted to Christianity after building this case for Christ that would stand up in a legal court of law. So in a legal court of law today, he's got enough evidence for the resurrection of Jesus Christ, enough um, unbiased witnesses, people that would have no reason to lie. You know, the apostles, they had no reason to, to make up the lies that they did. They were burned at the stake. No sane person would, would go and, and die for something that was a lie. Eventually they would recant, but they never recanted. They weren't walking around, you know, picking up girls. Uh, they sold everything they had and they gave it to the poor. All of their money 
in Paul renounce all of his power as a religious Pharisee. Those are the three reasons anyone sins, uh, power, money, and sex. And, and, and all of those reasons weren't the reason why they were preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that just, that, that just, that opened me up. Um, and the moment where I became born again, I, I could tell, I know not, not everyone can maybe say it was that moment, but for me, I know it was this moment. All the Christians were worshiping, their hands were up. There's about a thousand in this room singing praises to God. And I'm reflecting on everything I've heard that weekend. There are other things going on in my life, things that had to break down in me. And I realized in that moment, there's something on the other end of the praises of these people. They're not just lifting their hands and having some experience that is merely internal, but they're actually contacting an external being. And I, and I just said being in that moment. I didn't know that it was Jesus. I mean, how could you not, right? I'm at this Christian conference, but um, it was in this moment that I started to consider who am I before this being? I had this attitude about myself that I'd be able to take care of myself in this life, that I'd be able to provide for the things I need, a real self-reliance. And in that moment, I realized before God that when I die, I have no idea where I'm going to go. I, don't, I can't take care of myself. But Jesus Christ claims to have been back from the dead. He claims to have risen from the dead. And so I'm having this experience with God in the room right there while everyone's worshiping. And it was the praises of his people that pointed me to him. As they worshiped, as they exalted his name, I became aware of his presence. And that's when God illuminated my mind and he enlightened my heart to see who he is in that moment. And uh, I had a choice to make. And, and I fought it for about a minute. I fought it. I was like, what if I give my life to him and things don't go in a good way, how I define good at that time? What if, what if he sends me somewhere I don't want to go? What, I, you know, I'm going to give my life away to something I don't even, I hardly even know who he is. Though I've read some of the scriptures over these eight months with the Christians, I hardly know this God and I'm going to give my life to him. And then I realized in that moment, it, it really doesn't matter what I know about him. He's clearly more powerful than I am. And you know what? These Christians have been loving me for about eight months. And it's super important to, um, to proclaim that as well and to profess that as well, that for eight months I had experienced the love of the body of Christ. And it was that love that, that started to get me to question, because when you grow up in the world, you don't experience that that openness, that unconditional love, that agape love from the Father. And so it was in that moment that I, I decided, I, yeah, God, what, what can I do? What can I do? And, and I just gave my life to Jesus. And as everyone's hands were worshiping, his spirit, um, we have the indwelling, all of us believers have the indwelling of the spirit, and there are times when we are filled with the spirit. His spirit filled me in that moment. And as his spirit began to fill me and I fought it and, that, and then I let go completely, I just had this overwhelming joy. And I tell you, it was one who had used drugs for years before that, this sobriety just shot over my mind. This purity, this innocence that, that is beyond what we can explain, just washed over my entire being. I became a Christian. And I was filled with the Holy Ghost. And my hands went up in that moment. And I started worshiping God. And, and, um, I, turned, and, I, and I turned everyone around me. And I'm like, you guys feel that, right? Like, you guys are there, right? You guys, you know? And, um, yeah. yeah. So it's an honor to be able to share that with you guys. And um, wherever the Lord would like to do over the next couple of uh, weeks. Amen. Amen. Now, yes. Now, typically, I pray for those who get the testimony afterwards, but I thought today, if a few of you wouldn't mind just where you are praying for Tyler, for, for how, what God has done in his life, and for him for the next uh, month while he's here, that would be wonderful. Let's have a moment of prayer, and a few of you wouldn't mind just praying where you are, nice and loud. I'd appreciate it. Let's pray. Dear God, we give thanks for Tyler, for him bringing his message to us, and we pray that we may touch him in the same way that he already has touched us over these next four weeks.
Heavenly Father, uh, thank you for bringing uh, Ty out to Somerset, Michigan. And I would hope that some of us could teach him the ways of the country boy. <laughs> Father, we recognize by your providence that uh, you have brought Tyler here for this month and for a time and for a purpose. And so I'm excited for how he is going to bless our church. And I'm excited for how our church can bless him. And I pray that this would be a very much a mutually beneficial thing. By the end of the four weeks, uh, all of us can be rejoicing, giving glory to you for how you have brought this together. And so we pray for your guidance and providence and strengthening for Tyler and for our church over this next month. We give you the praise and thanks and all this in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. 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 How about one more round of applause?